we bought some ring lay. Our primary focus was to create wheel systems. And so we began to look at a domestic supplier for spokes. Um, and we came across Wheelsmith and many of us were uh, familiar with the brand and the heritage. And uh, so we began some due diligence and realized that that was an opportunity for us. We went out to Montana and we, we bought that business and moved it to Milwaukee. Um, soon after, we recognized that we didn't have all the capability we wanted with the equipment that we purchased from Wheelsmith. And we started to look one step further, and it turns out that Asahi Manufacturing in Japan, um, who also produced spokes for Wheelsmith, was available. So we went ahead and actually bought that business. And we moved additional lines of spoke production from Japan to Milwaukee. Um, it's a pretty large undertaking because the equipment itself was... Um, was older. We had to refurbish some of the equipment, um, put you know safety features and things like that on it um, to bring it forward so that we could produce with it. Um, now we have uh, six lines of production and capability of millions and millions of spokes per year out of our Milwaukee facility. Um, we use a, a 304 stainless and it's a proprietary wire that we get um, and we've looked at other vendors and things like that but this particular supply chain is very consistent in the uh, material they provide us and the, and the wall thickness and tolerances have to be really tight in order to maintain quality throughout the whole process. So getting into producing spokes um, you need to have the right raw material and then from there um, we actually bring the wire off the loom and then we cut it into a, a blank length that we use um, and from there it can either go and become a straight gauge spoke or it can become a butted spoke depending on what what the requirement is from if it's going to become a straight gauge spoke we and then it enters into the next stage of the assembly line where it gets headed and um, then it gets threaded um, and then it goes into a, a, a finishing process where we actually tumble the spoke um, with some media and that actually anneals the outer casing of the metal and makes the spoke nice and strong. If it's going to enter into the budding process, we take the raw blank and we take it in and it goes into a rotary swager. And the rotary straight swager takes raw stock and it swages or hammers the spoke from one end to the other through the uh, area that we want to be butted. Okay, and then the uh, blank is then taken and put into a straightener and then it goes and gets cut to the length that it needs to be and then it enters into the heading and threading process like the other spokes would. Um, rotary swagers are um, a hammering process. It's not a pull process. I want to make sure that you understand that it's not a draw. This is a hammering process. So um, it, it really makes a big difference in terms of the final product and the and the and the, and the true strength of the spoke. Um, and so that's really the two ways of which we make the spokes. Um, we also uh, work in different uh, material sizes. We have a, um, a 14 gauge, a 15 gauge, and then we actually have what we call a DH13 gauge, which is a, a little bit heavier spoke or heavier wire that we use for pedicabs and other applications like that. Um, we've actually thought about using those wheels for some heavier riders, we use them for a DH wheel. Um, and that adds quite a bit of strength to, to the actual wheel. The uh, colors, uh, there's been some demand. We're seeing some growth in those markets, um, especially for hand custom build wheels. Um, and shops are, are uh, real supportive of the Wheelsmith brand and they'll buy um, inventory in bags of 50 or 100, depending on what they're doing um, or whatever build they're doing. And we, started some colors with some local vendors here in Wisconsin. Um, we actually have a white, a red, a blue, and green, and it's a powder-coated spoke, and uh, we um, have that done, and it, you pay a premium for it, but it's an extremely durable finish, 
and um, we actually in the powder coating process actually have to strike off a little bit of the powder during the application process so that we can ensure that the taper between the nipple and the thread and the actual powder coated spoke surface is nice and clean so we don't get any chipping um, and these are all things that take time to develop and uh, it's pretty 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 neat for us you know it's uh, um, we've come from uh, never being in the spoke business to now being able to produce spokes and custom you know, colors and things like that.